Judaism with Soul 28. Codependency. The term codependent means a person who relies upon or clings to another person to make decisions for them. I live my life based on what someone else tells me to do. This is an unhealthy dependency called codependency. Doesn't it seem, therefore, that God has pushed us into a position of codependency on Him? The Gemara asks this question and says, in Kiddushin 30b, Rabbi Shimon ben Levi says, Man's Yetzar Hara gathers strength over him every day and seeks to kill him. And if the Holy One, blessed be he, would not help him, he could not prevail, as it says in Tehillim 37.33, God will not forsake him in his hand. Why would God make us in such a manner that we could not prevail over the Yetzar Hara, the negative inclination, except by turning to God? Aren't we becoming codependent on him. Rabbi Yitzhak Blazer, in Or Yisrael, Koch Ve'or, page 87a and b, answers that God did so so that man could become a ma'ave. A ma'ave is a petitioner, a requester, a person who prays and seeks God. On purpose, God did this. Therefore what? Therefore, the Yitzhahara pushes us into a position of codependency on God. God wanted that. Why? The Pasuk says in Yeshayahu 65.24, the Navi Isaiah says the following, It will be that before they call out to me, that I will respond. Haven't you always been bothered by this question? Why is it that God will answer us even before we call? Before I call out to him, he answers me. Why is that? Says Rabbi Yitzhak Blazer, an astounding point. An incredible idea. The very fact that we become a petitioner before we begin to speak, before we begin to ask, the fact that we stand before Hashem and are about to petition, about to request, about to yearn, about to ask for something, that act itself of about to, to be a petitioner, a ma'ave, that itself is the response. That is what hamivukash, that is what it asked of us, to become a requester, to become a petitioner. That itself evokes the response from Hashem. Hashem wants us to be an asker, to be a petitioner. He wants us to be codependent. But in what way? The Torah tells us in Breshis, chapter 30, verse 8, Vatome Rachel, Naftule Elohim Niftalti Imachosi, Gam Yacholti Vetikrashmo Naftali. When Rachel's maidservant gave birth to a son, she called him Naftali. Naftali means and Rachel said, with mighty naftali, with mighty intertwining. The word naftali means intertwining. With mighty intertwining have I become entwined with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name naftali. The root of the word naftali means to entwine yourself, which is related to the word tefillah. Naftali tefillah. To entwine yourself means to be engaged in tefillah, to be engaged in prayer, to be engaged in the process of becoming a petitioner. Prayer means to be intertwined, intertwined and entwined with God. Naftalti, niftalti. It is more than asking for things of God. We're not a petitioner to ask things of God. Rather, to express that our very being is entwined and intertwined with God. Our lives are intertwined with God. That is a healthy dependence on God. Why? Because we become totally intertwined with God such that our fate, our destiny, becomes one with God. That oneness gives us not only a sense of dependence, but a sense of true independence. Not charus, not engraved on us, not God is not engraved on us, but charus. He liberates us. Because when we're entwined with God, we're entwined with the concept of free will. Entwined with God means we're entwined with the idea that God has given us free will to choose to either reject Him or to seek Him. To choose the good path or the negative path. That Tzalem Elohim, that Bechira, what is Bechira? What is free will? Free will is the expression of Tzalem Elohim. When we're connecting ourselves with God, when we have a relationship with God, we gain a sense of an image of God. We become a reflection of God. That reflection of God means we have a tzalem a power of choice, a free will, 
and that liberates us to become godlike. The greatest thing we can do is to become intertwined, entwined with God. That is why prayer is not unhealthy codependency, but healthy codependency. And therefore, whenever God gives us challenges and difficulties, we therefore remain always connected to the source of our lives. To be connected to the source is a healthy thing. To be connected to God is a healthy thing because He gives us the power to choose ourselves. He doesn't choose for us. He doesn't decide for us. We don't become needy on Him. We become yearning for Him, inclined toward Him, connected to Him. And in that connection, we are granted free will. That's not dependency. That's independence. That's independence to make our own decisions. So in the depth of that being intertwined and entwined with God, then we gain true independence. That connection, that integration with Hashem, turns us into a strand of the wick. And the word naftalti, the root word of naftalti, is a wick. Psil, a pei, taf, yud, lamed, niftalti. The root of niftalti is psil, is a wick. We became a, become a wick in God's candle. We become intertwined with God's light. And that is the true essence of being a person who is a mava, a petitioner. In this faction, in this faction as David HaMelech said to us, not only do we pray, I am prayer. Prayer itself is an intertwining with God, is a becoming close to God, is an intertwining myself, my soul with God. I am enmeshed with God, intertwined and entwined with God. This is HaMevukash. This is what's asked of us, to be intertwined, intertwined and entwined with God. And this is called healthy codependency because we become thereby, through that dependency, we become truly independent and free to serve, to serve God out of our own free choice.